This is on MathHeals.com where you can find more links to uh, YouTube math videos if you wish. Let's take a look at simplifying square roots. There's, these are taking the ones we looked at in the previous lesson a little bit further. Now here we got square root of 12. Now remember a square root we're looking for a pair of somethings and if we find a pair of somethings then we can bring them out of the radical. Well. If I do the prime factorization of 12, that's 2 times 2 times 3. Now we're looking for a pair of whatevers. Here we have a pair of 2's, so those are going to come out in front as a single 2. Now we're left with 1, 3 inside, so the radical, the square root, uh, cannot disappear. Uh, this is also a radical. Uh, square root is a special type of uh, radical. So our answer is 2 square root of 3. On this one, we've got square root of 72. Well, 72 is 2, 4, 8 um, times 3 times 3. 8 times 9 gives you 72. Okay, we're looking for a pair of somethings. Well, here's a pair of 2's, so that's going to come out in front. And here's a pair of 3's, so that's going to come out in front. Now, when they come out, they come out with multiplication between them. So we'll have 2 times 3, and then we're left with a single 2 inside. So again, the pair of 2's comes out as a single 2, the pair of 3's comes out as a single 3. 2 times 3 is 6, so we've got 6 square root of 2. Excuse me. This one, we have 4 minus <coughs> square root of 20 over 2. And no matter where you, um, and this is just demonstrating having a radical embedded in something else, but no matter where you are, if you can simplify your radical, you, sh you should go ahead and do that. Well, 20 is 2 times 2 times 5. Now remember, with the square root, we're looking for a pair of somethings. So here's a pair of 2's, so those are going to come out in front as a single 2. And the 5 remains inside. Now, you see this pop up in uh, the quadratic formulas, which is why they're introducing it here. Is if you can divide this number, this number, and this number by the same number, do so. It should be called a three number rule. Uh, well, they're all divisible by t 2, so 4 divided by 2 is 2, minus 2 divided by 2 is 1, square root of 5, over 1, which just gives us 2 minus the square root of 5. Those ones disappear. Let's take a look at this problem. We got the square root of y to the tenth. Now it says simplify each square root. Assume all variables represent non-negative real numbers. Um, means it can't be negative, which means we don't need to worry about putting absolute value bars around it to make it positive. We only had one problem in the last section on that, but they don't even want you to worry about it here. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to do it the long way first, and I'll talk about the shortcut. y to the tenth. That means uh, 10 y's. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 3, That was interesting. Guess it wasn't outside my house. <laughs> there was a noise outside. Well, remember the square root? We're looking for a pair of somethings. Here's a pair of y's. Those are going to come out. Here's a pair of y's. Those will come out. Here's a pair of y's. Those will come out. Here's a pair of y's. Those will come out. And here's a pair of y's. And those will come out. Now each one comes out as a single y. And they come out with multiplication between them. So I got one, two, three, four, five y's out in front. which then gives us y to the fifth power. Well, that's kind of tedious. Um, so we're going to look at a shortcut way of doing this. Normally, I don't like shortcuts, but you really do have to know the shortcut, because if this was y to the hundredth power, for example, you wouldn't want to write it y a hundred times. OK, so let's look at this again using the shortcut. 
when you got y to a power or any variable to a power, what you do is you take that power and you're going to divide it by 2. It's always by 2. Um, so, and the reason why it's 2, if you're wondering, it's square root. And um, we'll talk more about the index in intermediate algebra. Um, but the index is 2, so that's why it's 2. Well, 10 divided by 2 is 5 with a remainder of 0. This is like old style uh, division, you know, with the remainders and so forth. Now this tells us how many y is going to come out, and this one tells us how many are going to stay in. Since I got uh, 5, that means I'm going to have 5 y's come out, y to the 5th, and 0 y stay in, so the radical disappears. So that's how you can very quickly uh, get your answer. We'll have uh, other examples of that. Let's take a look at this one. We got square root of 75 y to the 13th. Well, I'm going to treat the numbers just like normal. Um, 75 is 3 times 5 times 5 times y to the 13th. Well, again, we're looking for a pair of somethings. Here's a pair of 5's, so a pair of 5's is going to come out as a single 5, right there. Let's figure out how many y's come out. Well, we take our power, the 13, we divide by 2, 13 divided by 2 is 6 with remainder of 1. This is how many are going to come out, and this will be how many stay in. So we're going to have 6 uh, y's come out, so we got y the 6. Now inside the square root, we have the 3 left, and this says we're going to have 1 y. So this would be our answer. Let's look at another one. And let me start a new page. Okay, so we got square root of 80 into the 21st. Okay, let's look at our number first, 80. That's 2, 4, 8 uh, times 10, which is 2 times 5. So 2, 4, 8, 16, 80 times the end of the 21st. Okay, we did our prime factorization of 80. So we're looking for a pair of numbers, or a pair of somethings. Well, here's a pair of 2's, and here's a pair of 2's. So a pair of 2's is going to come out as a single 2, and this pair of 2's will come out as a single 2. So we got 2 times 2 out in front. Now the ends. We take our 21, our power, divide by 2, and that gives us 10 with remainder of 1. Well, this tells us how many we have come out, and this tells us how many we stay in, stay in. Which means we're going to have 10 ends come out. Now we're left the 5 inside, and we're also left with 1 in. Which gives us 2 times 2 is 4, so we've got 4 into the 10th, square root of 5 in. And that's our answer. Let's take a look at this one. <coughs> got square root of 72 a to the 10th b to the 7th and let's look at our number first 72 is 2 4 8 times 3 times 3 a to the 10th b to the 7th okay we're looking for pairs of something. Here's a pair of twos, that's going to come out. Here's a pair of threes, that's going to come out. So we're going to have two times three. Now the a's. Our power is ten, so we always divide by two. So ten divided by two is five, with the remainder of zero. This is how many come out, and this is how many stay in. So we're going to have five a's come out. Now for our b's. Our power is seven. So we've got 7 divided by 2, that gives us 3 with a remainder of 1. This is how many come out, and this is how many stay in. So we're going to have 3 B's come out, and uh, we're left with this 2 inside, and no A's, and 1 B. Oops, I guess I need to simplify that. 
2 times 3 is 6. So we've got 6a to the 5th, b to the 3rd, square root of 2b. And that's our answer. <clears throat> now this one we've seen before, but it leads into the next next idea, next formula. We've got square root of 4 25ths. Now, simplify, simplified form means get rid of um, uh, fractions inside of square roots. Can't have fractions inside of square roots. I'll write all this down here in a minute. We also can't have any square roots down in the denominator. But this one's easy. Because if you think of 4, that's 2 times 2. And 25 is 5 times 5. Well, square root, we're looking for a pair of somethings. Here's a pair of 2 fifths. So they're going to come out as a single two fifths. So that one worked out pretty nice. Simpl uh, simplified form when we're talking about uh, fractions. So if you got fractions involved. First thing, no fractions inside of a square root. So we can't have any fractions inside of a square root. Second thing we can't have is no square root in the denominator. So no square root in the denominator. <coughs> so those are the two things that we're going to be um, looking at. We also have some properties. Let me go ahead and write them down here. We'll use them on the next page. But uh, one of our one of our main properties that we use for this type is that if you have the square root of something over something, boy, that's really vague, isn't it? Um, a and B can represent anything: numbers, variables, whatever. Um, but if you got square root of something over something, then you can split it up, put a square root around top and square root around bottom, like this. Now that may not seem so important right now, but it will be once we start working these problems. So let's take a look at that. Here we got square root of 17 sixteenths. Well, 4 times 4 gives you 16, so that works out nice, but 17. But nothing times self gives you 17. Well, we use that property we just looked at. We can't have a fraction inside of a square root. That's what the problem is. But uh, we're going to put a square root around top, and we'll put a square root around the bottom. Because that's what our that's what our steps say. <coughs> our formula, I mean. Sorry, I'm watching TV while I'm doing this. I need to quit that. Um, now, 16 is 4 times 4. Because that didn't help us any, because we put a square root downstairs, and we said we can't have that. But um, 16 is 4 times 4, and again, with a square root, we're looking for a pair of numbers, so that's going to come out. So we're going to have square root of 17 over 4. Now, the two things I said you can't have. You can't have a fraction inside of a square root. We don't want to have that. I also said you can't have a square root in a denominator, and we don't have that. So this is actually our answer. Let's look at our next problem. 10, and we have the square root of 3 over x squared. Well, right away we said we can't have a fraction inside of a square root. So, But we got a property. It says you can split it up, put a square root on top, and square root around the bottom. Well, we can't have a square root in the denominator, we said. But, square root of x squared, x squared is x times x. With the square root, we're looking for a pair of somethings. Here's a pair of x's, so they can come out as a single x. Now, notice the instructions. Assume all variables represent positive real numbers. That means you don't have to worry about putting absolute value bars around the variables. So, um, we got it in that form. Now, the two things we don't like. We don't want fractions inside of a square root. We don't have that. And we don't want any square roots in the denominator. We don't have that, so we're fine. This is simplified form.
Let's look at this one. Square root uh, 40 a to the fifth b to the eighth over c to the fourth. Well, right away, we don't want any fractions inside of the um, square root. But we got a property for that that uh, usually helps us. We'll put a square root on top. And we'll put a square root on the bottom. Now 40. Uh, 40 is 2, 4, 8 times 5. Then a to the 5th, b to the 8th, over the square root of c to the 4th. Well, let's pick a, take a look at our variables, the a's. We take our power, divide by 2, and that gives us 2 with the remainder of 1. So we're going to have two a's come out, and we'll have one a stay in. Our b's. 8 divided by 2 gives us 4 with the remainder of 0. So we're going to have 4 b's come out. We'll have 0 b's remain in. And our c's. 4 divided by 2. That gives us 2 with the remainder of 0. So we're going to have 2 c's come out. We'll have 0 stay in. Okay, so let's simplify this further. Remember with uh, numbers, or well, with anything, we're looking for a pair of somethings. Here's a pair of twos. That's going to come out as a single two. A's. We said we have two A's coming out. B's. We said we have four B's coming out. And we're left with a two times five inside. A's. Said we leave one A inside. And zero B's. Now down below, we said we're going to bring two C's out. And then no C's inside. So our radical disappears. So then our answer is 2a squared b to the fourth, and 2 times 5 gives you 10a inside the square root, c squared. We said you can't have a fraction inside of a square root. We no longer have that. We also said you can't have a square root in the denominator. We don't have that anymore. So that's our answer. Last problem. We got square root. 100 m to the 21st over 9 m to the 10th. Well, before I'm going to split this up, we can use uh, something we saw in a previous lesson. If you have m to a power over m to a power in a fraction, you subtract a smaller exponent from a larger one. So 21 minus 10 would give me 11. And we have m to the 11th where our larger exponent was. So we'll have m to the 11th here. Now let me say that again. If you have m to a power over m to a power in a fraction, you subtract a smaller exponent from a larger one, 21 minus 10 is 11, and you have m to the 11th power where your larger exponent was, which was on top. Okay, now the problem with this is we can't have a fraction inside of a square root. Well, we've got the property. It says we can split it up, put a square root around the top, and square root around the bottom. Well, on the top part, um, 100 is um, 10 times 10. And we've got m to the 11th. And the bottom here, 9 is 3 times 3. Now, to figure out how many m is going to come out, we take 11, our power, divide by 2. That gives us 5 with the remainder of 1. This is how many come out. This is how many stay in. Well, the pair of 10s is going to come out as a... 10, and we're going to have uh, 5 m's come out, and it says we have 1 m stay in. And a pair of 3's comes out as a single 3. And that's our answer. And the end of that section. So let me go ahead and save it.